The Detroit Red Wings have been thunderstruck. That's it. That's the whole video. Take care. How else do you start a Tampa Bay Lightning video? I don't know. I'm new to this. I'm primarily a Leafs video blogger, so instead of themes like storms and lightning and thunder, I have, you know, despair and sadness. And the Red Wings are sharing it a little bit of that because they fall in game seven to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Two nothing Tampa Bay Lightning. They move on. This is the last series recap of the first round. You know how it goes by now. Let's do a little bit of a eulogy first for the Detroit Red Wings. Detroit, darn, one of the most likable teams in the league and the hardest to feel bad for. Most of my cousins are younger than the Red Wings playoff streak. That's why it's hard to feel bad for them. But then again, it's all about perspective. And I guess when you get used to something, it's hard to get knocked out in the first round. Look at me, I'm like, mmm, playoffs. And with Detroit, a lot of people tend to focus on the negative, like, Henrik Zetterberg had no goals. Pavel Datsuk's getting up there. <gasps> oh my goodness, Mike Babcock may no longer be around. Or how about this? You have a brand new number one goalie with Peter Mrazek. Which A, is good because Peter Mrazek, there's your new number one goalie. And B, your previous number one, Jimmy Howard, that's free stuff. You trade him for things that you need. Trade him for a conditional six round pick, get Pavel Datsuk, there's your plan. For real though, everyone talks about the inevitable downfall of the Detroit Red Wings. And the fact of the matter is, you just don't know until they're officially out. Because everyone talks about Datsuk and Zetterberg and, you know, Lidstrom of the past, Cronwall, oh, if they had just had him for Game 7. But I think I, the biggest reason for the Red Wings' success over the past decade has been guys not named those names. It's the ability to draft a Peter Morazic, a Thomas Yurcho, a Thomas Tatar, a Gustav Nyquist. As long as they keep doing that and it doesn't look like they're planning on stopping Luke Len, Denning, Len, and Ferraro, they'll be fine. I mean, almost fine enough to make the second round already. Now, these guys. Now you might be like, Steve, why do you have a Steven Stamkos all-star jersey? Wow, I just looked down, that's awful. Oh, I'm gonna do the rest of the video down here, I don't like heights. Steve, why, why um, with the Stamkos? And the reason is because I want him to come to Toronto when his contract is done, and I figure if he saw this, you know, Steven, we can be, it's the same name, we can be friends. But until then, here's what you can look forward to next round. Tyler Johnson, who's been so hot, will probably cool down. And Steven Stamkos, who's been so cold, will probably heat up. And Ben Bishop wasn't the greatest when that series started, but he got better as the series went on. A few fun facts about Ben Bishop, just because I've been researching them for TV. Yeah, he was nominated for the Vesna Trophy last year, and he's still pretty good at that whole puck stopping thing, but here are some other things. He led all goalies in assists with four. Okay, four assists, big whoop. John Scott's like, what are you, Adam Oates? You see, because, play okay. Ben Bishop led all NHL goaltenders this season with 13 penalties drawn. As in a guy roughs you, interferes with you, slashes you, goalie interference, whatever. He drew 13 penalties and he only took two. Look around the league. Players with a plus 11 penalty differential are kind of hard to come by. And the reason I bring this stat up, four of the 13 penalties he drew this season were against the Montreal Canadiens. Four different players, four different penalties. Then again, one of the penalties he took was against the Montreal Canadiens. He's very active, likes to play the puck, and the other team likes to run him because he's a six foot seven, really good goalie. That will be a factor, but you know who else will be a factor? Probably Carey Price, Vesna, Hart nominee, I guess. But did you know that Tampa was actually one of Price's worst teams to play against this season? He started for Montreal in all five games against the Lightning this season, and he went 0-4-1. And, and this is why you play for home ice, kids. Tampa Bay, was Carey Price's worst road city in terms of save percentage. Luckily, if the series goes seven, he only has to play there three times. And to go back to the whole penalties drawn and taken thing, in the five game season series, the Montreal Canadiens took 28 minors, the Lightning, 19. So you can look at the two teams on paper and compare them head to head, whatever. But if Montreal puts themselves at a disadvantage like that, they can get sucked in by Ben Bishop, get sucked in by the other guys they're gonna lose the series. And Montreal, for all the talent they have, you know, they can get a little excited. So this definitely isn't me tipping my hat as to who I think is gonna win the series because it's the playoffs and the playoffs are silly. I'm just saying, if you look at the season series as any indicator, the Lightning have the advantage. Although I also called the Lightning to beat the Canadians in the playoffs last year. Anders Lindback goes in net and they lose in four straight. That wasn't so good. And of course the old adage, I believe the first person I heard this from was Thomas Trance. Goalies are voodoo. Who do you think is going to win the series? And here's a weird one. Who do you think is going to be the better goalie? So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. And I will see you whenever a second round series is done. Can I, can I have a second off? Can I?